last night, one of the things that I meant to do, I didn't get around to doing it, was to show you how to use the um, create outlines to turn type into graphic shapes. So I'm going to do a very quick video of this. I'm not going to get into it in great elaborate detail, but I'm going to give you just a bit of a look at how I did this to make up for not making it happen last night. So what I did is I basically set some type up and it's real easy to do that. You just get the type tool click and it automatically throws a little bit of type out there and then you just change it to whatever you want it to be. Just as simple as that. So now I have a couple of things to type set up over here. And you know I can do a number of things. I can drag it to make it bigger. I can come over here and uh, I'm sorry, the wrong one. I can come in here and I can make it you know, 300% and hit OK and it becomes very big. And let's edit undo that because uh, actually it's too far apart. Let me, let me get them closer together so that they stay closer together. OK, I can select both of them and I can come in here and I can increase the size of them. And this is where I really want to focus for a moment because right now I got two lines of the same type. And you can, you can once, let me go to the view menu and let me go to the hide bounding box. There we go. So if you take a look at this type here, both of these types, as a matter of fact, at this point, have this little line underneath it and then there's a little anchor point over here. So this basically represents the uh, outline of this type at this moment. And the reason it's doing this is because it's in, a, it's in a special state. I call it an active state, meaning that I can go in and I can change this type to say anything I want. All right, I'm just gonna change it to B-I-L-L -L, just for the demonstration of it. And while it's in this state, I can come in here and I can change the uh, I can change the uh, the nature. And I don't like the way that looks at all. So let me just go like this instead. I L L. And it looks a lot better, not tremendously better, but it looks a little bit better. So anyway, um, I can change the the font. I can change the weight if there are different weights. In this particular case, there isn't a, a, any other weight other than the italic version in this particular one. Let's try another font. I'm going to try, uh, I don't know what I like here. That'll be good. All right, so, so now I can come in here. And again, I don't think this is more than one weight to it. No, it doesn't. Uh, so this is live font. I can come in here, and I can play around with the tracking on it. I can set the tracking so that it, it goes wider. Okay, um, there's an, a number of things that you could do with this. I could do the same thing with this because it's in the state. Let's go to the view, hide bounding box. It's in the same state as this. They both are in the same state at this point. All right, so that's the one state, which is the active state, which means that it's editable text. You can go in and, and you, can edit, you can edit outline text, but you, out, you edit outline text in a totally different way. That I will demonstrate in a minute. But this is editable text. You actually can change the text in a number of different ways that relate to your character and, pa and paragraph panel. Once you take this text, though, and go up into the type menu and go create outlines, type create outlines, it becomes graphic shapes. And if you zoom in pretty close on this, let me zoom in a little bit closer, close this for a second, so I can just move this up a little bit. There, I did it. If I, if I select this type, you now can see that you're seeing anchor points and line segments. And if you look very carefully, there are some very specific types of uh, points that are being made here. Some of them are just very average lines and, and segments, but then there's some that are different. There's these secondary points. These secondary points show some of the characterization that the typographer who designed this type built into that letter to make this letter have a nice uh, effect to it. The same over here. You'll see how they actually have a slight curving effect going on here and here in order to make that P look less than stiff. So there, there is actually, uh, a, they're graphic shapes. That's what they are. I mean, they, they go right back to basic shapes such as this. This is the same sort of a thing as you're looking at right here, except that somebody did it with the pen tool 
you know, and they came out and they made a letter, you know, and I, I, I'll do a terrible job of this, but you'll get the general idea of what I'm talking about. Somebody came out here and literally used the pen tool to build a letter just like that. And of course, I am really not trying to make this. I'm just trying to show you how this was approached. That's what's going on. This is somebody's creation. This is what they did. And as a matter of fact, it's made up of multiple parts in certain cases. Perfect example is right here. If you were to just go object ungroup, okay, I've now ungrouped this, I can just select the letter P, for instance. Now, the letter P has a hole punched through it, and the reason that is is because that's what the letter looks like. So somehow that has to be done. And if you select this, and you go to the object menu, and you go clipping mask release, uh, I'm sorry, compound path release, you'll see that there is the center part of that P. That's part of how that was made up. All right. Now, the, the word above this doesn't have that because this doesn't connect. This does connect. So that's why this is done this way. This is just a more compound shape to make that letter B. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that there are two different ways type can be dealt with. It can be dealt with active type, which somebody can change. So if I create a logo for set, for instance, and uh, I want somebody to not be able to change my logo font or weight. I would create outlines. Or let's just say I've created the font and my, my customer has decided, you know, I, I really like your logo. The, the, the font part of your logo is perfect. It's just the way I want it. Uh, what I would do as a designer is I would at that point go in and I would create outlines and then this way it is no longer active text and I no longer have to worry about it anymore. I don't really lose anything because the logo doesn't really ever get edited. It's usually the way it is and that's the way it's going to stay. So once you get to that point you come in and you create outlines. I'm going to go edit undo and edit undo again to bring it back and there's my type. Now it's still not grouped together and that could be a problem so you select all of it and you go object group, and now you can deal with this as though it is one piece. And they are individual pieces, and they're made in a very similar fashion to this. There are certain things that you can do with this that you can't do with this. There are certain things you could do with this that you can't do with this. All right, so, I mean, if you open up your character panel, I could come in and I can change the font, okay? I can change the, uh, the size of it by increments such as this. Um, I can do things like this where I space it out. You know, all the, if, all the things that I can do in here I have, if this is, again, we only pick, I only picked one that has one particular font to it or uh, face to it, so I'm not gonna be able to change that. But if there were multiple faces and if there were semi-bolds, uh, condensed uh, bolds, you could change that to that. You can't do that with this. On the other hand, you can't do things like this where I want to try to, let me actually do it with this one first. If I wanted to distort this, start distorting this text, like for instance, if I wanted to do something like that, graphically make it look like it's standing in perspective, you can do that once the text has been turned into an outline. You can't do that with active text. If I attempt to do that with active text, it looks like it's going to do it but then when you let go, it snaps back because it doesn't have the capacity to do it. So that is what I wanted to show you. Again, I know it's a very short video and it doesn't cover things completely, but I'm hoping it'll give you an idea between the difference, what the difference is between text which is in an active state and within an outline state. That's it. Thank you very much.